Hello and welcome back. Thank you for joining us and to our online viewers for staying tuned in. Uh, we're joining you live from the Edmonton Global stage at the Canadian Hydrogen Convention. Uh, and I'm Mohammed with Edmonton Global. I'm going to be your host for the next 15 minutes. So I'm here with Agatha and Terry to discuss about um, the upskilling of the hydrogen workforce in our Edmonton region. And let's get started. So Agatha, why don't you start us off by introducing yourself and uh, telling us about your work. Hi everyone, my name is Agatha Jamilakwe and I am currently the Acting Director of Applied Technologies Research at NATE. Um, so my work is applied research focus, but NATE is very committed to building micro-credentials and training for upskilling the workforce in Canada. Um, for those who do not know, NATE is one of the largest polytechnics in Canada and we have about 35,000 students going through our credit, non-credit and apprenticeship programs in a year which is pretty amazing. Um, I also want to throw out, say something extra about Nate. So one of the, the CEOs of DTI who have developed a dual fuel vehicle is a Nate grad. Wow. Yes, if you didn't know that. So excited for the things that Nate grads are doing in the ecosystem already. Yes. That's great. Uh, Terry, please introduce yourself and tell us more about your work. Hi, my name is Terry Johnson, and I'm the manager of industry advancement at the Alberta Motor Transport Association. The Alberta Motor Transport Association supports the commercial trucking industry, and we have about 18,000 members, so we've got half as many as you. Um, and those members, um, we're working with them with alternative fuels, so obviously hydrogen is one of those alternative fuels, providing them with services as well as vehicles, infrastructures, and making sure they know about jobs and training and what they need to support those vehicles. So, what are you guys currently working on, like, with regards to upskilling our workforce? Just tell us some more about your projects. Um, Nate is doing a, a couple of things, um, so where do I begin? We're doing a lot of things. We are building micro-credentials to support upskilling across the different points in the hydrogen value chain. Um, so part of those micro-credentials are on hydrogen production, transportation and storage. Um, we're also working on heavy duty mechanic training and upskilling those folks to be able to manage and maintain hydrogen dual fuel vehicles and hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. And in doing that, we're basically just working with OEMs and we have support from companies throughout the value chain and as well as the Alberta Motor Transport Association. So, um, a lot. But what we're focused on is micro-credentials and upskilling. So what are those little bits of training that existing professionals need to be able to support the energy transition and support this ecosystem. That's Thank right. you. Terry? Yeah, and we're working a lot with Nate as well. That's how I know Agatha. Um, we brought some of your heavy duty mechanics out to Nicola as the OEMs and working with wow. those OEMs so they know, um, so they can provide the training on the fuel cell, they can provide the training on the high voltage system, and they can really uh, show the Nate instructors what the differences are between the upcoming vehicles and the fuel cell vehicles versus the conventional vehicles so that they have some idea on how to adjust their curriculum to meet the needs of industry as it's changing. And that's right. So that's, that's, that's part of the NATE model. So we work with industry. And so in this case, we're learning from industry because industry is the head of the game. And by working with AMTA, our instructor was able to go and get the training that they will need to support NATE students to learn and grow. So it's, it's, it's an amazing time to be working together. Yeah, it's great working collaboratively. We're working with your instructors, but we're also working with industries. So right now, Velocity has really taken a lead and they have a hydrogen bay. Um, it's one of the first mm -hmm. hydrogen bays here in Alberta. They've got, uh, there's a Velocity Bay, there is a City of Edmonton Hydrogen Bay, and a County of Strathcona Hydrogen Bay. But Velocity is taking the lead um, in being able to repair and work with these vehicles. So again, their staff are upskilling and learning what they need to as mechanics to work with the systems. Um, and then I think there's even talk about Nate having um, some co-op programs go into their facilities and to extend that education. So we're connecting everyone together. 
Yeah, that's great to hear. And like, you know, that seems like the way to go to work collaboratively, the best strategy. And Velocity, I believe they're opening uh, their new bay in June. Like, so it's great. Uh, I mean, if you leave myself and Terry, we will go on and on. Because the more she talks, the more I'm excited about how... I just love the collaboration, the open-mindedness, the, the collaboration really, like Velocity being so open to... to first of all, they're going to do the Bay, and they're open to having Nate students coming for co-ops. Mm -hmm. um, I just love the way people are working together in this system. It's, it's amazing. I mean, like, the spirit with that is so great, too. Yeah, it is. And Nate is also working with regards to um, other, outside of mechanic, um, so you're working with other hydrogen awareness courses, carbon credit courses. Uh, these are all things that are going to be needed for industry as we move forward. It will be a point in time where all of the commercial drivers will have to be able to track their carbon credits. So that's something that you're already ahead of. I've got staff members of mine going to your courses and learning on how we're going to track that so that we can extend it to industry when it's, when it's here. So we're a little bit ahead of where we need to be in order that we will be able to educate people in time. That's absolutely right. And I'm smiling so much because Terry is talking more about NAEP programs than I'm talking about NAEP. <laughs> <laughs> so that's awesome. So yes, we have this, this course on carbon accounting, which um, folks can take to learn about credits and how to manage that mm -hmm. through their business. It's, it's, it's great. Yeah, um, another thing that AMTA is working with is we work with first responders. Right now we don't have a first responder training course because that's not really our expertise. What we do have is we have trucks. So we're able to bring the trucks to them and do more of an awareness and say this is what a hydrogen fuel cell truck looks like, this is what a battery electric truck looks like, these are some of the tools you might need, these are some of the systems that are similar, and kind of giving them an awareness so that if they would end up at an incident, that they have that information in advance. Um, and the last thing that I'm going to say about the training is something we haven't talked about, which is our training on carbon capture and sequestration. Mm -hmm. So we do have training going out to folks who are interested in learning more about operations and maintenance of our carbon capture and sequestration facilities and feasibility planning for carbon capture as well. So. Wow, that, honestly, there's a lot of work happening in our ecosystem right now. And since you mentioned first responders, uh, Edmonton Global will be supporting a project um, by the CSA group on uh, developing standards for first responders, as well as uh, knowledge modules for training them uh, in the hydrogen uh, space. So that's hopefully yeah. you should hear about that soon in the coming days. And those are exactly like, I mean, we're working hands-on with these trucks. We're taking a look at industry and how do we keep our industry safe? How do we make sure that anybody that's interacting with these vehicles and with hydrogen as a fuel source is ready to interact with those elements? Yeah. So in our current ecosystem, from your perspective, what kind of supports do you feel that we still require to advance uh, the, the workforce in the hydrogen economy? Trucks. <laughs> so I don't know who's here. Um, right now we're working with um, a few vehicles that are coming in um, and we're working with a hydrogen diesel dual fuel which is a different uh, a different vehicle configuration completely. So we need more vehicles to come in so that we know more systems and we understand more about the different configurations. The fuel cell vehicles that we've worked with, the hydrogen systems are typically placed in different locations. Um, so the more vehicles that we have coming in, the more opportunities there is to learn. And it, it, they're not just one size fits all. Each OEM has got a little different configurations. So. From a training perspective, um, training is always supposed to meet the needs of industry. Um, so we're no, I won't say we are at the forefront, but we are enablers of the growth and the expansion and the scaling of this sector. So collaboration, um, everything that Nate has achieved, we've achieved that because um, the companies the associations that are in this space have been open enough to work with us to support them to grow, to scale. So if there's anything that's needed is openness and collaboration. And sometimes that's difficult to achieve when you have competitors in the same room. But NAE training will, will, is focused on enabling growth. 
So many times it's going to be agnostic to um, one particular OEM, but at mm -hmm. the end of the day, we need that collaboration and working and being ex exceptionally connected to industry for, for training to work. So That's, that's a critical focus for us um, because you need to be able to work with more than one individual as you're advancing industry. Okay, so we need to stay more connected and more trucks. <laughs> so what do you see as an enabler in our region that's brought us so far in the uh, workforce sector? For us, it's been government funding. You take a look at Prairie Can, you take a look at Enercan. There's um, Emissions Reduction Alberta, uh, Transport Canada. So the funding that has come through to us has enabled us to do numerous trials with the vehicles and to get these vehicles out into people's um, lives for them to know that they're around, to connect with Nate, Saint, everyone else, to make sure that they know the upcoming needs. Um, for us, it's, it's funding as well, um, but I'll still go back to collaboration. Um, the openness and the willingness of people to first of all work together uh, has been critical. And then government funding supported all the, um, enabled everything that we've been able to achieve. So funding is that enabler that has got us to be able to work with organizations to b develop Developing curriculum costs money mm -hmm. um, and sending people abroad for training in Nicola costs money. Um, so government funding, federal, we've got a significant amount of the funds that needs received has been from the federal government. So that's, that, that's, that's been a huge enabler for, for Nate. Yeah, and when you talk about collaboration, it's unlikely partners working together um, because AMTA shouldn't be working with fuel um, providers and fuel production. Uh -huh. uh, we're trucks. Um, we, we shouldn't necessarily be working on developing micro-credentials with a high-end polytechnic. Uh, we do driver training courses. So really identifying uh, what we're doing and then bringing the right partners to the table. So working with people that we maybe haven't worked before and extending the way we have done things in the past. I agree with you 1000%. So we recently did part of the the vehicle demonstration training. Um, SAIT participated in that with Nate and hosted our demonstration at the Southern Alberta Institute of Technology. Mm -hmm. I mean, we love to work with SAIT. Sometimes we're considered competitors, even if we're on different sides of the... Uh -huh. Cut off. <laughs> okay, however, it's nice to see that they're open-minded enough to do that, to mm -hmm. say, Nate's leading this, we want to learn about that as well. And so they're doing their part to support the training and, and that. So very much unlikely partners coming together to work together. It makes it beautiful. Yeah, and I know one of the um, differentiators, I think, about Alberta Motor Transport Association being involved is that we don't support a specific OEM. We don't support a, a specific hydrogen producer mm -hmm. or a specific trainer or data. We're kind of that third party that it's agnostic. Um, and we've been able to bring... We go to a convention and you see OEMs that are different OEMs all sitting together. You see different educational institutions all working together and they're all advancing the same goal, which is yeah, awesome. Yeah. yeah, it's great. And um, we're actually on time. So <laughs> thank you guys for joining us on this panel and thank you audience for staying tuned in. Uh, so we have our um, global hydrogen case competition happening after lunch at 1 p.m. And in the meantime, if um, you want to learn more about the hydrogen, uh, 5000 hydrogen challenge, then uh, please scan the QR code on the screen as well as on the board. Thank you.